Um, another RPG. I apologize in advance. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Empty Shelf Reviews, the show where I review games as if they were left on the shelf at your local video store back in the day. Um, if you're new to the show, I play the first five minutes, totally unedited, and then I switch to a review after. Today, we're playing J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings Volume 1 for Super Nintendo. I'll tell you this right now, I had no idea this game existed. Zero. And I love Lord of the Rings. And this is clearly, this is 1994, so this is way before the movies. So, if anything, I mean, I don't even know what to expect. I have no idea. Pretty good intro so far. I would have liked if it had the new music movie, or I mean, the new uh, music from the movies, but again, this is way before the movies, so I'm super curious to see what this is. I'm expecting it to be an RPG, right? So... Uh, with that said, I mean, we could read the story all day, but hopefully you know what Lord of the Rings is. If not, it doesn't really even matter. So let's just go. Because I'm, I'm worried that this is going to be an RPG. What have I done? I swore off RPGs. Oh, God. Oh, God, it's an RPG. Anyways, here's the first five minutes. Let's go. My dear people, my dear Bagginses and Boffins and my dear Tooks and Brandy Books and... Grubs and chubs. Today is my 111th birthday. Yeah. Okay, so right... This is straight up from the books. Boom. Imagine... Okay, we can't read all this. I mean, it's Lord of the Rings. You've seen the movie. This is going to be a full-on RPG, but... Here we go. Hello, Gandalf. Hello, Frodo. Time has come for me to leave the Shire, Frodo. Gandalf's not Scottish. Uh... This is very interesting. Interesting. Here's the interesting thing. There's only part one. I, there's no part two or part three. So I feel like they did this game and it was a, must have been a massive flop. Uh, stay tuned for the review. To, we'll figure that out. Here we go. Lord of the Rings. Volume one. I mean, I already started the timer because this is quite, quite the intro. So let's just keep going. Start. It's going to be a ton more words. Hopefully it's an action game. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so I'm in control. We got we got stab. Oh, we got defend. Wow, good animations, actually. Oh, we do not have an item equipped. Okay, we don't have an item. And that's just... There you go. That's just whatever that is. So here we go. We're Frodo. Let's go. Oops. Well, now how do you get into doors? That we do not know. Could it be the triggers? Nope. I guess you just can't go indoors. Oh, yeah, you just walk over the people. You don't even have to press a button. Hello, Frodo. Sam was looking for you. They're all Scottish now, by the way. Let's go find Samwise. Samwise! Oh, here he is. That's got to be Sam. Wheeze. Legends. Yeah. Um, another RPG. I apologize in advance. <laughs> Lord, whatever. That's the fun about picking these games up off the shelf. You don't know what you're going to get. That's half the fun. I mean, I'm not reading all this. Let's just... I just want some action. Obviously, there's got to be action because there's a stab button. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, wolves on planes. I like the sounds of that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's attack some wolves on planes. Here we go. What are we going to get? A lot of loading for the Super Nintendo, I will say. Oh, creepy now. Oh, take that wolf. Now, do you even, is that going to kill him or is that just knock him down? Now, this game came out in 1994. That's, that's kind of late in the Super Nintendo's world. Like, I mean, look at this game. And then to think, Super Mario 64 came out like two years later. So, hilarious. Oh, it's Pippin. What's up, Pippin? Pippin's afraid to go by himself. Well, then come with me. What are you doing? Let's go. Oh, I don't have... Oh. That's it? You just want to talk? Okay, Pippin. Oh, look at Pippin! 
wolf with red eyes. Interesting. I mean, oh, he got me there, though. Okay, now they're on both sides of me. I don't like that. What the? Oh, he could stab upwards. Oh, he's on me, though. Look at him. He's coming for me. Uh, look, oh, we got two wolves. Can we jump? No. Oh, we can protect, though. It's a lot of wolves. Like, why? I don't remember this many wolves being in the Shire. Or are we no longer in the Shire? No, we're, we gotta be in the Shire. And what's that on the left? Like, is that just a border to the game? Or what is that? Like, why is there just rocks everywhere? I have no health, so... Oh, wait. Oh, that's my health. I gotta open for health. Immersion. Immersion. Oh, we're just... Oh, there he goes! Let's collect them. No, we don't. Can't collect. Okay. I mean, you'd think we gotta go talk to the town people, right? I just don't want to. Oof. Done. Can't go that. Okay, we gotta go talk. Oh wait, can I go this way? No, of course. Well, the wolves are no more, so I'll tell you that. And did I just level up? There was a weird sound there. Oh. Did I just level up? No. Oh, wait. Now I have nine hit points instead of eight. So maybe I did level up. Maybe I did. Anyways, we're going to go talk to the town people. That was uh, one of the most boring first five minutes of my series. So I apologize for that. But anyways, uh, Lord of the Rings. Let's go to the review. So J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings Volume 1, it's an action role-playing game and it was produced by Interplay Productions for the Super Nintendo. Um, and obviously it's part of the first edition of Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. So you start as Frodo and then you're supposed to acquire your other uh, party mates and then really the whole game is just based on fetch quest. So somebody needs something, you go and you get it, you bring it back to them and that's the entire game. Um, the cool thing, I guess, that what they were trying with is that you can actually use a four-player multi-tap, and you can actually have four players playing this game all at once, which I admit that would be kind of cool. If anybody dies, then their death is permanent, and you just have to continue the game, so that's kind of bizarre, but sure. So there was supposed to have a part two and a part three, but because of extremely poor sales, they just said, you know what, forget about it. I'm going to come right out and say it. I did not enjoy this game at all. It just feels like a half-finished, weird... Nothing is easy. Nothing just nothing is easy in this game. I mean, so you start out and I'm trying to go around and I'm trying to find out who to talk to and what to do and where to go, right? And it's taken me a while, which fine, it's an old school RPG, I understand that. But then I talk to Sam Gamgee, who I know from Lord of the Rings. He's the first guy that goes with Frodo. He goes, "Hey, I'd love to go on your mission whatever with you, but I can't until I find this guy's glasses." So I'm wa walking around talking to everybody. Well, I can't find the glasses. So I go in these caves. I'm going here, I'm going there. Can't find the glasses. And then I find another hobbit, Pippin, and he goes, Hey, thank God, Frodo, that you're here because I really don't want to cross these fields all by myself. Okay, great. And then I'm standing there and I can't figure out a way to... How do I get him to come with me? I have no idea. I try everything. I try putting on the ring. I try this magic fern, which just makes a weird noise. I try everything. Nothing works. This game doesn't make anything easy. Zelda, if Zelda was programmed worse. There's no diagonal walking, so that just makes it really hard when you're trying to fight these wolves and stuff. The animations look good, but they just feel weird because it's like a delay and it's slow and it's long. And then there's a block button and you can't even really tell if you're blocking or not. It just seems like if you're going to go for the RPG thing, then do like a turn-based. But if you're going to go for the action RPG thing, then you got to have better controls than this. The graphics are fine. They're going for that kind of like quasi-realistic feel and tone to it where everything is, you know, has that slightly darker edge to it. So, they, I mean, for Lord of the Rings, it's a dark story. It works. It's good. It's fine. The graphics are okay. The music for this game was good. I mean, it was nothing special, but it's it, it kind of conveyed that dark tone, the underlying, you know, evil Mordor... So without banking off of the new movie's soundtrack, I think they did a pretty good job at like kind of capturing that Lord of the Rings feel in music. Uh, but unfortunately, overall, just because of how confusing this game was and I just couldn't find my way around and I couldn't figure out how to get guys to come with me and nobody's helpful and it's just, 
It was just a disaster. I can see why there's no part two and three. I can totally see why that. I'm going to have to give this game a leave it on the shelf. It just wasn't fun. At no point was I like, you know what? I really want to see where this game is going. I'm just, in my mind, it's just the exact same of what I'm seeing, only more of it. So I don't want any part of that. So J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings Part 1 for Super Nintendo, I give it a big old leave it on the shelf. So that's it for this week's episode. And if you guys uh, like what I'm doing, then please subscribe. And you'll see a new episode every Monday and Thursday. And leave a comment if you've ever played this game or even heard of this game, because I know I haven't. Um, until next time, guys. See you later. Later.